Hey family, it's Tasha Mom Bear Prepping. So welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. You already know what time it is. Pull up, get your drink, pull up. Um, I've got my little reenlistment cup from NMCB7, who raw CBs. Um, and I just want to um, get into a topic that I don't think is going to be a surprise. It's just another video to get um, ready and to ensure that you're getting ready for what's to come, right? So there's all types of videos out there of like, this is about to happen. This is about to happen. This is about to happen. And what's crazy is all of them are true, right? Any of these things could happen. Economic collapse, this, 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 right? And so all you do as a family is try to have your head on a swivel, but not swiveling out of control, right? Um, have your mental game t tight and just move forward with smart decisions that will um, ensure that your family is set up for the best way possible for what's to come. So if we talk about we're absolutely in a recession right now, some people would argue that we're absolutely in a recession right now. And what comes next is a Great Depression. And we are absolutely moving towards a Great Depression. We're actually moving towards something much, much worse, in my opinion. OK, total economic collapse, total decline of the dollar, total um, shift, because this is what they want to do, shift to a digital currency. And that's what we're all dreading. Nobody wants that. I shouldn't say nobody. Some people want that. Um, but it's, it's people that don't understand what's going on. Okay. And, um, there's going to be a lot of control as they shift into that world. Right. And so how do you get your family ready? How do you, we've talked about things to do to get ready for a recession, things to do to get ready for economic collapse, things to do to get ready for banks to close and the dollar to collapse and different things. Right. And so today I just want to talk about some tips tips for Great Depression as we move into that that is going to happen and how you're going to survive and different tips different things that our our people right did in order to survive and you're going to mold that into your everyday quality of life how you do things in your family I'm not telling you how to do things in your family but these tips will help and you're just going to take them and figure out um and maybe there's things you can buy that have to do with these topics maybe there's skills and things you can learn that have to do with these topics um because everything that you do every single day counts. I don't care how small it is, how minute it is. Everything you do is a step closer to being um, less stressed and, and, and be ready. Okay. So number one thing I have is grow your own food. I think this is not a surprise to anybody. A lot of people during the great depression realized, Hey, your the food is not readily available. It's rations. You can only get certain things. And so having a survival um, garden, um, people call them victory gardens. Is that right? I said it out loud and it didn't sound right. Okay, I, I digress. I don't know. Um, but a survival garden. Basically, you have the staple foods growing, whatever fresh fruits and vegetables that you and your family eat and that you can grow in your area, you would grow. And everybody, you didn't have to have huge land. People were doing this in their backyards, in their front yards, it, with just little plots of land, little areas. They would just cut out and notch out a little area to grow, do some rows of maybe six or seven vegetables even, right? It was just enough to just supplement. It wasn't really meant to like live off of, but it was supplemental to what they were cooking and what they were eating because they were eating a lot of soup stews, a lot of bread with that. And then how do you bring in your fresh elements? You're grabbing something from your garden really quick. And there is a lot of crops that grow very fast. You put them in the ground, and within weeks they're ready they're they're ready to harvest and you have fresh greens okay so think about this think about today's time think about the the aspects that you have that they didn't have we have all these things to make our life as easy as possible so take advantage of those things to get a little indoor garden set up to get a little outdoor garden set up like i have an indoor garden and it's not it's not this crazy significant thing but there's some fresh herbs there that i can throw into a super salad or eat fresh you know, there's some basics, uh, basic food enhancers, right, that um, I'm growing right now. And as I move forward with that and grow that and maybe find a better space and more space, I'm going to grow that and, and into actual everyday crops, right? If I can learn how to make um, grow potatoes indoors and be successful, I'm telling you, you can't tell me nothing, okay? 
So grow food, grow food, grow food, indoors, outdoors, any way you can. Um, next thing I have is lean on community. They leaned on community. They leaned on each other for assistance, for help. They asked for help when they need it. I'm not necessarily saying ask the government for help. Community, I'm more like, who are your people? Who is your tribe? Who is the like-minded people like you? Who is that neighbor that's like you, that does things like you, that you have a friendship with? There's a mutual respect there, right? Um, and leaning on each other for help. You know, something happens in your home, you need help fixing it. You're able to call on that neighbor. They'll come over and they would help you assist in fixing that and, and vice versa, right? They ask for something and you would go over and then help. So that community um, of, of helpfulness um, is is key. and could be key from the difference of starving and not starving um, or something that needs to be fixed that goes way left and, and dominoes into something much, much bigger problem when you know if you had community you had somebody that you could lean on um this could be church right this could be a, a school what is the community dy dynamic okay all right next thing i have is um <clears throat> they lived on um and ate less so they lived on less they ate less they minimized everything. They lived a simpler life. You know, nowadays you can go to the store and you go to make a meal. I've mentioned this in other videos. You go to make a meal and it's 50 ingredients. And you're like, it's not even needed, right? And half of that is seasonings, right? So that's not needed, right? Literally, salt and pepper will get you through. Um, if you want to be fancy, salt, pepper, and your go-to seasoning salt and your, your golden. And if that seasoning salt has um salt pepper garlic paprika like just a basic seasoning salt that you made yourself phenomenal right so what's your go-to seasoning salt pepper that's all you need in your preps stockpile 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 and it's the it's the basics right um you do not need i mean yeah do you want to have a flavorful meal and it's just so delicious but there's no point in these these meals that have 15 ingredients 20 of those are you know seasonings um it's just not, it's not needed. Okay. So they lived a simpler life. They lived with less. Okay. They weren't able to just go to the store and buy a bunch of clothes and do this and do this. I mean, you know, if something happened, you got a hole in a jacket, they figured out how to patch it. There was no, let's just go to the store and get a, um, get a jacket, right. Or have multiple jackets, right. So they lived with less. They learned to do that and that was successful. Okay. What else happened? Um, they heavily traded and bartered. So obviously, as soon as there's no banking system, um, you know, you can't get money out of the ATM, your bank has closed, you can't even possibly get access to your money, depending on what happens, what crumbles. Um, and it becomes, we live in a world of how do you go get goods, right? Supply and demand, how does that work? Well, that works with bartering, with trading. Um, maybe it's a trading post that you go into. Maybe it's a trading post you go in just for, for food every week, right? Um, and bartering for things. Maybe you need a certain type of medicine or maybe you need this or whatever. And bartering with your neighbors, with your friends at a, at, in town, whatever it is. Um, but um, learning how to do that, what does that mean? What do you have for bartering? you know um what is it skills that the skill set that you have that you can barter like hey you know how to do something that is is something people will need help with right um so they leaned heavily on bartering um type of business okay so that would come back um they learned how to hunt fish and forage so a no-brainer i mean this goes into holistic and knowing your plants knowing the things around you your trees what they can give back to you um foraging for you know wild onions and wild lettuces and knowing the difference and um, being able to hunt or being able to fish even right going down to the river and, and you have the gear and and again we have so many new innovative things that you know our people didn't have right and so getting those things getting a you know a, a very nice you know fish some fishing poles nice lines some lures having a tackle box that has quite a few different things and just investing in that and having that because that right there could be so valuable and just in the ability of getting some fish somewhere or hunting or whatever, just trapping even, basic trapping, how to, you know, I know people don't wanna talk about this, but just how to um, trap rodents and different things in their in their backyards or their, their woods behind their house or whatever, right? Small rabbits and squirrels and things like that, okay? You'll be surprised what you would eat when you're starving, okay? Um, next thing that um, our people did is they reused and recycled. I just talked about this on either yesterday's video or the day before. They reused and they recycled, okay? Um, 
you know, they didn't throw everything away. They thought about it first. Is this something that I can reuse and use over and over? I could just clean it off and use it again. Is it something that could be transformed into something else, right? Innovative, like, hey, I'm not going to use this anymore for this, but I could use it in this area for this. Okay. So a lot of reusing, recycling, um, what they had is what they had and they made it work. Next thing I have is one pot meals, right? A lot of soups, stews, um, a lot of stuff that's really filling that would be in one pot, you know, had everything, your, your meats, a carb, right? Something filling rice, beans, you know, that type of thing. Um, what I call fillers, you know, we had some vegetables, just very, very easy to do, very easy to put on to heat up and then do other things. Fed a lot of people, goes very far. Um, and, and that's what they did. They, they, they made these one pot meals, right? Where maybe you just had a small chunk of meat. And if you tried today in today's world, right, that one chunk of meat maybe is one person serving, but they turn that one piece of meat into a big goulash or a big one pot meal. And then therefore everybody's getting a little bit of the meat and you're doing it on, you know, a, a fourth of the, the meat that you would have put out in your family for the night. Right. And so learning how to do that, where you're taking a little bit a sampling, right? Basically what would have gone on one person's plate, you literally can put in a one pot meal, bump up the filler, right? The rice part, the beans part, the pasta part, and you're increasing the, the amount of food and everybody is leaving the table with full bellies and possibly there's leftovers, right? So that's the thing, that's the smart thing to do is these one pot meals, um, they're easy, very little ingredient, ingredients, right? Um, and you just let them cook down and eat them, make some bread to go with them, grab some fresh greens from the garden and you had a full meal, okay? Next thing they did was um, they stockpiled staples. They kept the staples, you know, having your basics for making bread, right? Your flours, your yeast, you know, having your basics for soup, some stocks, some broths, right? Your basic seasonings, your go-to seasoning and salt and pepper, having flour, having sugar, you know, having just the basic things that you needed to get through the day, your coffees, your teas, you know, um, what is it that that is the minimum that you need? What is your cooking fat, right? Your oil, your fat that you used, right? Um, there wasn't a whole lot of deviating with all this other fancy stuff because nobody could afford all that other stuff. Stuff was too hot. It was inflated. Stuff was rationed, limited. And um, there, you just weren't even able to do that. And then, and, and then you take a case where like there's no dollar and um, and nothing, you know, that you even had is of a value anymore. It's all about bartering and trading. And so that stuff matters. Like this, all the extra of everything, whatever it is you're talking about is not going to be a thing anymore. Right. Um, unless it's an extra thing that, cause there's so much stuff on the market that you can buy now and make life easier that you still have time to buy those things to make things easier. Things go left. You, you purchase those things and have those things to make things go, um, left. And a lot of people will be like, well, I'll just stockpile all this stuff. And yes, you stockpile to have that variety and stuff but i think you'll realize you're still going to go back to the basics right you're going to go back to what people are doing around you you're not going to be cooking some 14 course meal just because you can when your neighbors are eating a stew you know a one pot stew because you're hopefully you're thinking that that's not going to last forever and how do you make that that um you know, all the things you bought, all that food, all those types of ingredients. Yes, the variety is through the roof, but you still are going to want to scale it down to make it last for as long as possible. Okay. Because fasting and rationing might be a real thing. Okay. Depending on what has happened, you know, you, there might not even be food on the shelves to get. Okay. Next thing I have is, okay cook they cook their own food right there 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 was restaurants restaurants go out of business um nobody has money for restaurants it, it, it's gonna be you're cooking you're cooking for home you're cooking your own meals you're cooking your breakfast your lunch your dinner any kind of snacks everything is being cooked from home okay and that's how they made it there was no uber to bring you your food and all this fancy stuff and if, if this goes left we're not going to have that either and then the last thing i have is um they, they fix stuff themselves, right? A lot of do it yourself. I mean, we've invented this stuff where we have all social medias have how to do things, how to do it yourself, that innovative creative side where 
look, this has to be fixed. This has to be corrected. How can I do it? What can I do to do this? Or I need a tool. I need something. And so, you know, they had to do stuff themselves. They had to sew stuff themselves, fix stuff themselves. They had to become handyman, if you will, um, and just learn to handle business themselves. And again, you have the power right now to set yourself up to have the tools to have all the garden tools to make life easier for you so you're not breaking your back you have all the time to get your tools um your your fix it house type tools making sure you have the basics all the things that would make fixing things and correcting things better all the tapes the glues all of that stuff right the tarps everything okay um and you have this moment in time where things haven't gone left where you have the ability to do that. You have a job, you have an income, you're able to go out and get stuff. And that just not might not be there in the future for us and or, or not be able to do it easily, okay? Um, get the things and the tools that you need to make your life easier now to prepare for what is inevitable. We are going to go into a great depression. What we have to hope is not, is not as bad um, and that I guess a great depression is going to happen. That's bad. But what we have to hope is there's not these domino effects or something else major, like major events are happening or dominoing off, to, off, off of that or happening in the background where now you're not only trying to just survive starvation and not being able to get things and a great depression, you're having to survive something else, a war in your face, um, whatever it is, it's major and, and it's not, it's not good, right? Um, great depression, you have that handled and then having to handle a storm that's coming through just the the smallest things can just set the place ablaze right and so um, mentally trying to get ready for that so tasha you talked about all this stuff but how how do you prepare well you prepare yourself one thing i'm going to say right now let me take a drink because this is a doozy and i mean this in with no shade learn to cook a lot of our younger society and even people my age, 40s, right, 50s, never learned how to cook, okay? We're living in a society where everything is done for us. People can easily call up, get groceries delivered, get um, meals delivered re from restaurants, from fancy restaurants, from mom and pop places, from fast food. Everything is at a touch of a button and you literally have a large part of the population that literally does not have any food in their home right now. And for some of those people, for a lot of those people, it's because it's not because they don't have the money. They make plenty of money. They make maybe really good money and they have zero food in their house because they live a lifestyle where maybe they're working 80, 90 plus hours a week. They're traveling for their job a lot. So they're eating on the road. They're eating in restaurants. They're eating in hotels. They're getting food delivered to their offices. They're getting food delivered when they come home. Um, they're just not home enough. So they're like, well, I don't need food here because I'm not here enough. It will go bad. Well, let me, let me tell you, baby, you, at a minimum, you should be having a pantry that has an a stockpile with staples. Yes, if you don't live in your home, maybe you don't have a fridge full of fresh stuff because you know it's going to go bad. If I'm buying fresh fruits and vegetables, this is just going to go bad. However, that should not stop you from having food. Buy freeze dried food, buy canned food, buy food and have it in your house. Okay. And learn how to cook. I can't tell you a lot of kids growing up, teenagers don't know how to cook, couldn't boil water. How do you do it? And I don't know about you, but I'd be trying to smack that out of my child when he's like, how do I do it? I don't know. How about you figure it the, out, right? Like put your brain on, turn it on and start thinking about what it is that would make whatever it is in front of you you're trying to do um, work out, right? Be but, but I'm telling you real quick, these kids would just be like, well, I don't know how to do it. Well, figure it out. How about you just think about it for two seconds before you say, how do I do it, Right. They want the quick answer. And it's not just our kids, you guys. It's it's society. A lot of them do not know how to cook. So learn how to cook. Teach your children how to cook. If you are a cooker like me, you're the cooker for the most part for your family. Does, does other people know how to cook? I do the majority of cooking, but hubby absolutely knows how to cook. 
boom, we, we know how to cook. Kids have to learn how to cook. They, you can't just be doing everything for them. Maybe you do everything for them, but you have to teach them the basics. You have to teach them how to cook. The stuff they want to eat, show them how to cook it, right? Um, learn how to cook. Learn how to cook. If you cook, learn how to do one pot meals. Maybe you know how to cook. You make stuff all the time. You get your little, you get your little recipes for whatever social media and you cook something. Uh, do you know how to just cook on an open fire? Do you know how to cook on a camp stove? Do you know how to cook a one pot meal, a casserole, a, um, you know, maybe you don't have an oven anymore, a, a one pot meal, literally you're, can you put, just throw stuff in a pot and it turns out good. Okay. Um, one pot meal, stews, homemade soups, know the basics of a soup, how to do a basic soup base and build a soup upon that. It's super easy once you start doing it. Okay. Um, but you've got to learn those basics. So learn how to cook. Um, stock, start stockpiling. I mean, we still have the ability to get food out here, to go to stores, stockpile bulks, stockpile staples, stockpile going off of sales and flyers and coupons. Um, whatever it is that your budget allows, continue to do that. Continue to stockpile. Continue to ensure that you have, at a minimum, the basics, the staples. Um, the garden. I, I mean, obviously, you've got to get going on a garden. Start now. Think about research what zone you live in if you're going to do something outside research just research hey what's what zone do i live in okay when's the last frost the last frost will tell you when you could start planting in the ground but you could start planting seedlings inside then to transplant to outside or you could direct sow but that just puts your timeline farther okay then google what's the 10 crops the best crops to to grow in your zone get those what of those that you eat, right? You're not planting stuff you guys aren't going to eat. You know, figure out what seven crops you're going to grow, right? You don't have to have this garden with like 30 things of food growing in it. Think about the basics. Maybe it's just herbs and starting an herb garden, starting a medicinal garden, starting um, some kind of garden that has your basic herbs, your basic um, flavor enhancers. Tomatoes and peppers, two of the, the easiest fastest crops to grow that produce just a ton of stuff and they are food enhancers to me right tomatoes you can make a ton of different things with them peppers a flavor enhancer i i just it, it doesn't get any easier you need to start a garden start researching now you're kind of behind the curveball as far as researching to get ready even for spring right because you got to get your seeds you got to get your tools you got to get your stuff right figure out locally where you're going to get dirt right fertilizer all this stuff okay um income how, how are you going to do that and what is your bartering trade game right what is it that you have that you would be able to barter trade is it a skill set maybe that you're able to barter trade what are the skills that you have that would be able to be used in the future and be offered up um and what items do you have to maybe it's egg extra eggs from the chicken right maybe it's a skill set you you are a master quilter and sewer okay um maybe it's hubby can fix anything right fix it fix it man like what will be your bartering power maybe you have some gold and silver maybe you have a lot of jewelry like whatever it is what think about what your bartering and trade value of the things that you have or the skill sets you have and what does income look like the current job you're working in it in reality if things go left is a job that's even going to be there is it a job that's going to be laid off? Is it things went so left that it's just not even a thing anymore? And it's just immediately, uh, it's American blackout. And it's just a job that doesn't even make sense. You were IT. You ain't working no more. So now what are you doing to bring some sort of income into your, your family? How are, what, where are you making money to be able to take that ration card that the government gave you to get your loaf of bread and your, you know, your quarter pound of meat and some eggs and some bread for the week? Like, how, you know what I'm saying? Like, you still have to have income to be able to do that. Okay. Um, think about taking care of yourself and what it's going to take for you to take care of yourself that nobody's going to come and help there's not going to be these crazy programs yeah great depression where these these huge lines you see in these old school pictures that was people standing in line for food you guys that was people standing in line for um either ration cards to get food maybe it was a soup line people were standing in line to get a bowl of soup for the day and that was all they were getting for the whole day was that bowl of soup okay and then they were like trying to find work I'm telling you, 
do not put yourself in that circumstance. Get your medicine together. Get your medicine cabinet together, your home pharmacy, your supplies. Get your antibiotics. I, I'm telling you right now, if you haven't gone to the links in the, in the description box below, I have two companies that you're able to buy antibiotic kits from. Okay, they do not expire for a year. Uh, on a separate topic, we know that you can go further than that, but I'm not a doctor, so I'm not gonna tell you what to do. But you need to get your emergency antibiotics in your house. You need to get over-the-counter meds, you need to get your vitamins, vitamins, you need to do some research on holistic stuff in the, the plants and trees that are around you that might be able to offer you and help you in a time of need of sickness. I'm telling you right now, there's not going to be all these hospitals and things. To go. And like I said, remember, I just said something happens that compounds it. We're going into a Great Depression. We're also being warned that a pandemic is coming. Right. It's coming. Can you imagine a Great Depression and a pandemic and your dollar and everything you've ever worked for is not worth anything anymore. So those hundreds of thousand dollars that maybe you've saved up for retirement in your bank account is gone. Your 401k is gone, right? You're just struggling to try to keep that roof over your head, put food on that table, right? You have some kind of income so you can continue to get supplies. I'm telling you, you're going to work your land. You're going to see what your land and your property offers you and gives you. I don't care if you live in the suburban area. Maybe you have a lemon tree. You live in California. You have nothing but some. You live right in the smack dab of, of the suburban area. But maybe you have a lime tree. You have a lemon tree. You have some orange trees. I mean, you have to think about where you live and what your land can give to you. What it can give to you for bartering aspects. What it can give to you for your animals, right? and your skill sets and what you're building up right now. The things you're doing now, the moves you're doing now is what is truly gonna determine how difficult it is in the times to come, right? And I know some people are like, man, she's so doom and gloom. She's like, the, the sky is falling. Baby, the sky has been falling. I just don't know when it's actually gonna hit our heads and start knocking us out, right? And start knocking people out, okay? But it's coming, it is coming. And, and this is not no, you know, the end is world the end the world is ending no we're gonna make it through this but i'm telling you right now some people are not gonna make it through it it's going to be very very difficult for people tough times are coming and what you do today is literally going to determine um the success the level of success for your family so get it going do not drag your feet do not listen to the naysayers shut out the noise move forward do what you gotta do continue to push forward and be positive and be calm right and have a peacefulness about it you're just calmly going out and getting the things you need this ain't no panic mass panic oh my gosh uh, uh, right no calmly do what you know you need to do as a woman or a man of a, that has a family okay and handle business okay so I hope this was helpful for some people. Even if you've been prepping for a while, I hope that I said something that triggered something else. We like triggers here, okay? Not the type that you're thinking about, but we like those mind triggers that get your mind thinking about some other stuff you can get into, some other stuff you can do, other goals, spin-off goals, right? And you keep it going. Don't get stagnant. Don't get complacent. Move forward. Press on. So you guys be kind, be well, do everything in love, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye.